السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك Today inshallah we will be having our 10 and last session of giving or shedding some light on Surah Al-Kahf we will be starting with inshallah bismillah wa tarakna ba'dhum yawma idhin yamuj fi ba'd wa nufikha fi as-sur fa jama'nahum jam'a Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here in this ayah and we shall leave some of them to surge like waves on one another what does this mean another ayah Another uh, in Surah Abasa really explains this uh, ayah very clearly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yawma yafirru al-mar'u min akhih wa ummihi wa abih wa sahibatihi wa banih li kulli mri'in minhum yawma idhin cha'nu yughnih. On the day, a man will flee from his brother, mother, father, his wife, and his children because everyone on that day has a matter adequate for him. He will not be caring about anybody. The only thing that he will say, nafsi, nafsi, myself. Even the prophets would say, nafsi, nafsi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, is so angry today. No one is ready to help anyone. They just want to make sure that they are saved. So once Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was seen and he was worried. And they asked him, cheer up ya Rasulullah. He said, كيف أنعم وصاحب القرن قد التقم القرن وحنا جبهته واستمع متى يؤمر So he said how <coughs> how can I relax when the one with the horn has put the horn in his mouth knelt down and listened out for the command of Allah to be given to him. He's ready just to blow. The, the hour is so close. The day of judgment is so close. And that was at the time of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 1400 years ago. So they asked him, Ya Rasulullah, ma naqool? What do we say? Qala qoolu hasbuna Allahu wa ni'ma al-wakeel ala Allahi tawakkalna. Say, Hasbunallah wa ni'ma al-wakeel. We really depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is our only shelter. And we shall collect them together. Fajama'nahum jam'a. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to bring all people back for reckoning. Wahasharnahum. فَلَمْ نُغَادِرْ مِنْهُمْ أَحَدًا And we shall gather them all. All. No one will be missing. We will not leave anyone behind. وَعَرَضْنَا جَهَنَّمَ يَوْمَئِذٍ لِلْكَافِرِينَ عَرْضًا And on that day, we shall present hell to the believers and non-believers. Here, we, we shall present hell to the disbelievers plain to view in this ayah. In another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن مِّنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا And وَارِدُهَا, there is none of you except that he will come to see hellfire. Believers and non-believers, winners and losers, those who obeyed, and those who disobeyed, everyone is going to see the hell fire. The believer will know how 
he is he was lucky to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to do righteous deeds so to avoid what he is saying. While the non-believers will realize that they were unjust to themselves by disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared this hellfire to, the, uh, to those who disbelieved in him and in his messengers. In this fire, there are two types of torture. The physical torture, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كُلَّمَا نَضِجَتْ جُلُودُهُمْ بَدَّلْنَاهُمْ جُلُودًا غَيْرَهَا لِيَذُوقُ الْعَذَابِ So in this fire, there will be uh, a physical torture that whenever their flesh and, and skin gets destroyed, then they will be replaced by another skin. So just to taste the torture. Whereas the physical, physical torture is the humiliation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, fiha wala Stay there and you will never talk to me. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talked about this hellfire and he said, أوقد عليها ألف سنة حتى حمرت وألف عام حتى بيضت وألف عام حتى سودت فهي سوداء مظلمة لا يطفأ لهبها. One thousand years, the fire was burning until it became red. Another thousand until it became white, and another thousand years until it became black. So now it is black bitch black and it will not be uh, put down so the nar the hellfire complained to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and said ya rabbi akala ba'dhi ba'dha fa then fa so ya allah I have been tortured by this fire. The fire is saying, I'm being tortured by this fire. فَأَذِنَ لَهَا بِنَفَسَيْنِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave permission to hellfire to have two breaths. One in winter, نَفَسٌ فِي الشِّتَاءِ وَنَفَسٌ فِي الصَّيْفِ And another one in summer. فَهُوَ أَشَدُّ مَا تَجِدُونَ مِنَ الْحَرِّ وَأَشَدُّ مَا تَجِدُونَ مِنَ الزَّمْهَرِيرِ So the, the day that is super, super hot in summer is a breath of the hellfire. And the day that is super, super cold in winter is the breath of uh, this hellfire in winter and we know a zamharir is the the highest point of coldness this is called zamharir we know that there are seven seven doors for uh hellfire what about the other and from up till to down, the order is, the, the, uh, the names of these doors, Jahannam, Saqar, Lava, al hutama Al-Jahim, Al-Sa'ir, al hawiyah So the lowest is al hawiyah And once Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sitting with his companions, and they heard a loud uh, noise and they, they were frightened, they were scared. And Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, told them, this was a stone that was thrown in hell fire and it took 70, 70 years until it reached its bottom. 
Now, what is the food? What is the drink of the people of hellfire? If they want to, to, to have a drink, they would be given boiling water. And if they want to eat, they will have uh, thorny plants. Their bed, they have a bed from hell and over them a cover of fire. Why would they have this? And thus we recompense the wrongdoers. So the people of hellfire will not die and rest and get relieved and they will not live happily. They would wish to die, but death is already uh, uh, was on the form of a lamb and it was slaughtered. No more death. So the highest torture of the people of hellfire is that they missed getting into Jannah and they missed the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show the, hell, the hellfire to the believers, to the non-believers on the day of judgment and he will bring it forth for them to see its punishment before they enter it. And this is by itself a torture. And he said, يُؤْتَى بِجَهَنَّمَ تُقَادُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ بِسَبْعِينَ أَلْفَ زِمَامٍ مَعَ كُلِّ زِمَامٍ سَبْعُونَ أَلْفَ مَلَكٍ Hell will be brought forth on the day of judgment, pulled by means of 70,000 trains. Each, will, each of which will be held by 70,000 angels. And this is for whom? For the peoples. would not look and they would not they would not hear so they were refusing they were refusing to accept guidance and they refused to follow the truth and they could not bear to hear it they would hate to hear about the message, they would he, they would hate to hear Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam talk about it. They have eyes, they have ears, but because of their uh, super hatred to what they will be hearing, as if they are not hearing it. Sometimes you would uh, you would talk to your child, and you would see he's not listening to you. You say, why you don't hear me? He's listening, but he does not want to hear you. And they were recommending and they were talking to each other and they were recommending each other not to listen. So why they were, they were, uh, talking to each other and they were uh, asking each other not to listen to the Quran because they know that this Quran was in the Arabic eloquent language and they know that whoever is going to listen to the Quran he will believe in, in the Quran he will be touched by the Quran 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Jafiyah, وَيْلٌ لِكُلِّ أَفَّاكٍ أَثِيمٍ يَسْمَعُ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِ ثُمَّ يُصِرُّ مُسْتَكْبِرًا كَأَنْ لَمْ يَسْمَعْهَا فَبَشِّرْهُ بِعَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ Woe to those, uh, to, to each of those sinful liars. They hear the, the, the verses of the Quran, but they persist arrogantly on their position as if they were deaf. So Allah is giving them tidings of painful promises of painful punishment. أَفَحَسِبَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنْ يَتَّخِذُوا عِبَادِي مِنْ دُونِي أَوْلِيَا So, then do those who disbelieve think that they can take my servants instead of me as allies? So there were some people who worshipped other people and those were the lovers, the people, the, those who, who were worshipped are People who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qalati al-Yahudu Uzairun ibn Allah. The Jews said Uzair is the son of Allah. Qalati al-Nasara al-Masih ibn Allah. The, the uh, Christian said Jesus is the son of Allah. Other uh, uh, group who went astray said Al-Malaikatu banatu Allah. Angels are the daughters of Allah. So those are the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whom they love, who they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but people have taken them as, as allies. They worship them instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ هَلْ نُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِالْأَخْسَرِينَ أَعْمَالَ So tell them Shall we, shall we tell you about the greatest losers in respect of their deeds? قُلْ هَلْ نُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِالْأَخْسَرِينَ أَعْمَالًا الَّذِينَ ضَلَّ سَعْيُهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Those whose efforts, those who, whose actions have been wasted in this life. They did deeds, but their deeds would not count. Their deeds are not in accordance to, with the prescribed way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would accept. And we all know that whatever action we do that is not pure for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not be accepted. So, فَمَنْ كَانَتْ Allah, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ لِلَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَهِجْرَتُهُ لِلَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ لِدُنْيَا يُصِيبُهَا أَوْ إِمْرَأَةٍ يَنْكِحُهَا فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى مَا هَجَرَ إِلَيْهِ Whoever wants to do something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he will be rewarded. But if someone wants to, to do something good just so that people would would recommend him so that people would talk good about him. So he got his reward in this dunya and later on in the akhirah, he would say, where's my, my reward for this action? And Allah will told him, you went to, to, to fight, but you wanted to, to fight so that people would say you are, you are brave and you got that in, this, in the dunya. So you won't have the reward in the akhirah. And that's why whenever we do anything, any word, any action, any deed, we say, Ya Allah, consider this as pure for you. And if you have any slight uh, idea in, in your mind, oh, uh, is this pure for the sake of Allah? Uh, am I doing it just for the sake of Allah? Then you are really thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But some people do some actions that, oh, I want to give charity. So they would say that I'm generous. Okay, they will say you are generous, but where is your reward in the Akhirah? Nothing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, 
أولئك those people ضل سعيهم الذين ضل سعيهم what does the word ضل mean ضل means will have no uh, reward how it the word ضل let's look, dig into the word ضل in the Quran and we will find that it has uh, about five meanings and it occurred in the Quran in different positions with different meanings. So here in Surah, in Surah um, Al-Kahf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, uh, So their, word, their deeds will not be rewarded because they got their reward in dunya. In other surahs, in, uh, so for example, in, uh, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so one of the two women would uh, forget and the other one would remind her. So the word dalla here in Surah Al-Baqarah means to forget. In Surah Al-Ahzab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَعْصِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ ضَلَّ ضَلَالًا بَعِيدًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will decree something. Whoever oppose, whoever will not listen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to his messenger, then he is, he is a way of the right path. Another surah in Surah Al-Shu'ara, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَعَلْتُهَا إِذًا وَأَنَا مِنَ الضَّالِّينَ This is about Sayyidina Musa. When he when he killed that person. So he said, فَعَلْتُهَا إِذًا وَأَنَ مِنَ الضَّالِّينَ I was heedless. I didn't know that if I book this man, he will die. This is another meaning for the word ضَلَّ And in Surah Al-Duha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًّا فَهَدَى Allah uh, uh, saw you, O Muhammad, looking for the truth. And so he guided you to the truth. So there are several meanings for the word Allah. Here in Surah Al-Kahf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying their actions, their deeds will not be uh, rewarded because they got their reward in dunya. They thought they were doing good, but they lost their reward in the akhirah. أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ وَلِقَائِهِ they are those who deny the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who denies the signs and the ayahs of their Lord. And they deny the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't believe in the day after. And that's why when they did something, they, when they do bad deeds, they will not fear the punishment because they do not believe in the day of judgment. They do not believe that they will be resurrected after death and their, scale, their uh, deeds will be scaled. They do not believe in that. And that's why when they did the wrong do, the deeds, they did not fear any punishment. They denied the proofs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established of his oneness and the, uh, those of the, uh, the truth of his messengers. They denied everything. They also denied the day after itself. And, and they thought that even if there was a, a, a day after, they will be highly rewarded. They were good, enjoying their life. Well, so they thought that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make them enjoy the akhirah if there is a day after. So what will happen to those people? فَلَا نُقِيمُ لَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وزنا. On that day, on the day of resurrection, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall not, shall assign no weight for, the, for, those, for those people. They will have no deeds. And even, even if they have some good deeds and they hurt people, so Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say, فَيَأْخُذُ هَذَا مِنْ حَسَنَاتِهِ وَهَذَا مِنْ حَسَنَاتِهِ so there, the, those who were harmed by those people, 
they will come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they will, Allah will say, okay, go take from their good deeds. So they will take from their deeds. And when their good deeds are done, فَإِذَا فَنِيَتْ حَسَنَاتُهُ أَخِذَ مِنْ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ So they would take, they would leave their, there is no more good deeds. So what will happen? People will throw their bad deeds to them. And they will be left only with bad deeds and they will be thrown in hellfire. So why will, why did, why will they be uh, ending in hellfire? So that is their recompense, hellfire. And this will happen to them because they disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاتَّخَذُوا آيَاتِ هُزُوَةِ And they took my ayahs, they took my signs. And my messengers, they took everything for a joke. We will punish them. They mocked the messengers and they did not believe in them. They even said, to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Surah Al-Hijr, Ya ayyuha alladhi nuzzila alayhi dhikru inna ka lamajnoon. Ya ayyuha alladhi nuzzila alayhi dhikru. You who have been revealed to me, this dhikr was, the, uh, the Quran was revealed to you. So they believed that there was something that was relieved. They would say, inna ka lamajnoon. You are a mad person. You are crazy. So they will be placed in hellfire. They will be thrown in hellfire. They will be tasting the torture of hellfire. That torture which will be forever. <laughs> now that the heart is trembling because of everything that was mentioned about hellfire, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will go in to change the course of their ayahs and he will talk about Jannah. Allah is merciful. Whenever he talks about hellfire, he also talks about Jannah. Whenever he talks about punishment, he wants people to know that there is a reward. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ كَانَتْ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتُ الْفِرْدَوْسِ نُزُلًا so verily, those who believe and do righteous deeds shall have the gardens of al firdaus as a lodging. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one of his hadith Qudsi says, أَعْدَدْتُ لِعِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحِينَ مَا لَا عَيْنُ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذُنُ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطَرْ عَلَى قَلْبِ بشر. I prepared for my righteous servants reward that an eye has never seen, an ear has never heard of, and nothing would have been even imagined. So everything will be amazing. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Ati baad al jannati yawm al qiyamati fa astaftih. I come to the door of the jannah. And I will say, I will knock on the door. So it will be open. فَيَقُولُ الْخَازِنُ مَنْ أَنْتْ So the, the keeper, of, the door keeper of the Jannah would say, who are you? فَأَقُولُ مُحَمَّدْ I would say, Muhammad. فَيَقُولُ بِكَ أُمِرْتْ لَا أَفْتَحُ لِأَحَدٍ قَبْلَكَ I was ordered not to open the door of the heaven except for you. And if we want to talk about the Jannah, about paradise, we see, we know that there are eight doors for Jannah. And when we talked about uh, hellfire a few minutes ago, we said that how many, how many uh, doors are there? There are seven doors. But the Jannah has eight doors. Kullun minha. Each and every door is assigned for an, a righteous action. For example, Babur Rayyan. 
يدخلوا منه الصائمون those who are who keep fasting they they like to spend their time fasting there is a special door for jannah called babur rayyan those those who fasted in dunya were who did extra fasting who did nafil fasting who did sunnah fasting will go enter jannah from this door there is babu sadaqa those who give charity those who help people in need those who help the poor they will be entering from babu sadaqa in so many doors and there are so many uh, steps in the jannah the highest is al firdaus we have al firdaus we have adan we have al khuld we have al ma'wa there are so many steps in jannah and the differences there are so many differences between each and every step and say the muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in fi al jannah 100 daraja there are hundreds uh, uh, there is 100 step in jannah ma bayna kull darajatayn كما بين الأرض والسماء uh, والسماء. so the the uh, the distance between each two steps is the same as the distance between earth and sky. والفردوس أعلىها درجة. and الفردوس is the highest the highest position in Jannah the highest step. وَمِنْ فَوْقِهَا يَكُونُ الْعَرْشِ And above this, Al-Firdaus, is the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِذَا سَأَلْتُمُ اللَّهَ فَاسْأَلُوهُ الْفِرْدَوسِ So when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not say, Ya Allah, I want to enter Jannah. No. Just say, Ya Allah, I want to be in, the, in Al-Firdaus al-A'la. Allah is the most generous. Whatever you ask him, he will give you. So ask the highest for yourself. Ask the highest for your parents. Ask the highest for your children. Always make this dua. Ya Allah, we want al-firdaus al-a'la. We don't want any, any, any level of jannah. We want the highest. And we all know that no matter where a person be, even in al-firdaus al-a'la, the highest reward that the servant would get in the akhirah is meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is listening to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَجُوهٌ يَوْمَئِذٍ نَاضِرَةٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهَا نَاضِرَةٌ There will be on the day of judgment people with radiant faces they are looking at their Lord. They are looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Al-Firdaus is a hell in paradise at its center and it's the best of the Jannah, of Al-Jannah. So again, when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask for Al-Firdaus al-A'la. خالدين فيها لا يبغون عنها حولا. So in this al-Firdaus, what will there be? They, they shall be there forever. خالدين فيها. So this blessing is going to be there forever. The, the blessing and the, uh, the reward in this, uh, in this paradise, in this verdose, in, in, in all the, the steps of Jannah will, be, will not decrease and it will not uh, uh, end. It will always increase. وَلَدَيْنَا مزيد. We have more and more and more. In dunya, someone would work hard to buy a house. When he gets more money, he, he will add a car. And when he gets more money, he'll get a car for his wife. And when he gets more money, he would get a bigger house. And he would get a mansion. And then 
So whenever you have something, you want something that a, a higher thing, higher level. But in, in Jannah, you will not need to, to work to gain. In dunya, you need to work. But in akhirah, whatever you wish you will get. قُلْ لَوْ كَانَ الْبَحْرُ مِدَادًا لِكَلِمَاتِ رَبِّي Say, if the sea were ink for the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know that whenever Allah wants anything to happen, he will just say, Kun. With this word, all the orders will, will be fulfilled. So if we want to uh, record all the orders, then the ink of, even if the uh, sea was the ink to record all the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this ink will be empty. It will not count the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will not count the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Luqman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ لَوْ أَنَّمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْ شَجَرَةٍ أَقْلَامٍ وَالْبَحْرُ يَمُدُّهُ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ سَبْعَةُ أَبْحُرُ مَا نَفِدَتْ كَلِمَاتُ اللَّهِ And if whatever trees upon the earth were pens and the sea was ink replenished there, thereafter by seven more seas then the words of Allah would not be exhausted more orders of Allah more words of Allah nothing can count the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَلَوْ جِئْنَا بِمِثْلِهِ مَدَدًا Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, what, um, لَوْ كَانَ الْبَحْرُ مِدَادًا لِكَلِمَاتِ رَبِّي Because the water, the water of the sea is always in a cycle. The sea water will evaporate Clouds will be formed, sea will, uh, water will come down, rain will, will come down, and then the same thing. So count all the water, it will not count to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَوْ جِئْنَا بِمِثْلِهِ مَدَدًا Even if we brought the like, the like of it as a supplement. قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يُوحَى إِلَيْهِ Say, O oh Muhammad, I am only a man like you. It has been revealed to me. So, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu is saying, I'm just like you. I am not an angel. I do not know the unseen. So when you ask me a question and I don't know it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals the answer to me. So all the stories you asked me about, I did not know the answer. And except that Allah told me the answer. Allah revealed the answer to me. So... Whoever claims that I am lying, let him bring something like this, Quran, that I have been brought with, that I have given you, that I have passed to you, that was revealed to me. And I do not order you to do something that I do not do. There is an order for prayers, I pray. There is an order for giving sadaqah, I give sadaqah. There is an order for doing this, I do it. So this is a lesson for us. If you want your children to do something, you should be a model before them. They should look up high at you and see that you yourself, 
is doing what you want them to do. It is revealed to me that your God is one God. I worship him with no partner. So this is the right, the right path. This is the straight path. Don't go right and left. One God. And thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this blessing. Imagine that there are so many gods and you want to worship each one of them. You cannot. And it has been mentioned in the in one of the surahs. Shuraka'u mutashakisuna wa rajulan salaman li rajul. There are partners who, who have someone, the, the, uh, the employee needs to please each and everyone, but they, they, the partners themselves, disagree amongst each other. Who the employee are going to, to uh, please? Ilahun wahid. Faman kana yarju liqa rabbi? So whoever hopes for meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever is waiting for this meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَارِحًا And look at this, فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say, whoever hopes for Jannah, or whoever hopes to avoid uh, hellfire, no. لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ Whoever hopes to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, we do not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get into Jannah. We do not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we are afraid of hellfire. We worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he, is, he deserves to be worshipped. Because he deserves to be pleased. This is why we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Jannah is created. Anar is created. And we do not worship anything that is created. We worship the creator. Let him do righteous, that person who wants to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So doing righteous uh, deeds is the way, is the boat that you can ride to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we are traveling, we take some food, we take drink, we take uh, or something to, to uh, uh, warm us, we, take, we, we prepare ourselves for the, for the journey. And now we are on a journey to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to get ready for that. We have to prepare ourselves for that. فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا And let that person who wants to uh, meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let him not associate any partner in his worship to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Will you do something? Do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not, do not do it and expect that people would say thank you. Even thank you. Do not, do not wait for people to say it. Do it for the, the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't have expectations of people. If you do, you will get miserable if they don't fulfill your expectations. Keep your words, keep your deeds pure. Keep your heart pure. Nothing in our heart except the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing in our heart except the love of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nothing in our heart except the love for the Quran. This is our sustenance. This what will help us when we have troubles. This what will help us when we are tested. 
Life is full of tests. If we have Allah in our heart, if we have his messenger in his heart, in our heart, if we have the Quran in our heart, then this is what will make us strong when we need the strength. At the time of turbulences, we have power in our heart that will make us power. That will make us powerful. وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا There is no associate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in one of the hadith al-Qudusi, أَوَلَمْ أَخْلُقْ جَنَّةً وَلَا نَارًا أَوَلَسْتُ أَهْلًا لِأُعْبَدْ If I did not create paradise, if I did not create hellfire, am I not... Uh, 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 do I not deserve to be worshipped? Look at all the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Eyes, we can see everything. Hands, ears, feet, we can walk everywhere. Just ima imagine those people who are deprived of some of these blessings. That would... They would give all their wealth just to get it back if they can. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us these blessings. Shouldn't we thank him for, for that? And this, look at the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has connected the beginning of the surah with the end of the surah. Allah has created everything good for us. So what do we have to do? We have to say, Alhamdulillah. And if you go back to the first words of the surah, it's Alhamdulillah. Powerful surah. Amazing surah. A surah that's full of light. And this is why Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مَنْ قَرَأَ سُورَةَ الْكَهْفِ فِي يَوْمِ الْجُمُعَةِ أَضَاءَ لَهُ مِنَ النُّورِ مَا بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ الْجُمُعَتَيْنِ Whoever reads Surah Al-Kahf on Friday, on the day of Friday, there will be, there will, he will illuminate, light will be in front of him between the two Jum'ahs, the two Fridays. Try not to miss reading Surah Al-Kahf, inshallah. And now that we have gone over just, just so some signs of Surah Al-Kahf, just when you read it, just think of the meanings that you learned. Think of the ayahs, think of the stories that we talked about. And thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that now there is a higher level when you read to, uh, this surah you are at a higher level understanding you are at a higher level level connecting with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with this we come to the end of uh, uh going over of some of the meanings that are in this surah and of course, uh, we need more, way more than 10, ten uh, uh, sessions to talk about this surah. But this was a very quick overview of Surah Al-Kahf. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Ya Rabbana. لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته